What is the outrage with the new Harry Potter game? 1. Ongoing backlash surrounding J.K. Rowling's views on transgender people 2. The goblins are supposedly based on anti-Semitic stereotypes. Huge controversy. How huge it is depends on who you talk to. Not taking sides. But many that I have talked to are not too worried about her views and are interested in the game. Others do not like her views but want the game. Others feel strongly and feel not buying the game will make a point. I want to address something. I played the game yesterday with my GF for the first time. Now I don't know if any of the things I'll state were ongoing before or after the backlash. For character creation, there's no gender attached. You simply do the character you like with hair, face not locked by a choice. You do choose your dormitory. Sorcerer or witch. You can actually play a female with a man's voice and vice versa. Clothing and cosmetics. As far as I played. Are not locked by gender type. You can pull up a dress or man's clothes no matter what you play. During gameplay. I've come across black people. Arab people and Asian people. All this during the first two hours and that includes the hour-long character creation made by my GF. And the intro cinematic. Now I'm sure I'll come across a lot of other things. But you just cannot punish the game makers for making a pretty inclusive game. No matter what JK Rowling says or thinks. This is the final product and should be judged like that. It's as simple as this. Her position on trans people is that they are dangerous and harmful to society. She has made a hobby out of amplifying that viewpoint and seems to have a lot of fun with it. After her statements, LGBT and similar groups ended up responding hostily to her. Well people who support that hate obviously welcomed her with open arms this has further amplified her behavior over the years. She is also on record as saying that she feels the royalty checks she gets justify her position and society's acceptance of her views. With these things in mind, some people feel the need to distance themselves from the material and not financially support her. Others certainly have different views on this. From the view of people who celebrate her position, be they right-wing groups seeking division in LGBT communities or simply other individuals who specifically hate trans people, there's of course the goal of downplaying this and stoking the fire. Doing so minimizes and delegitimizes the perception of society's view of trans people which obviously they support. From the view of people who have no opinions regarding trans people and are not individually impacted by this. Many simply want to disregard it because who wants to invite argument and hassle into their lives? Which obviously makes sense as well. From the view of people who her, they are dangerous and harmful to society, position against trans. Peoples as mirroring society's views of gay people in the 80s and 90s. Or people who simply are repulsed by the hate in its own right. There are strong feelings about things which benefit her. And finally of course from the point of view of trans people. Well as with any group there are many individual views. But by and large this is just one case in a nation which supports behaviors like hers and far worse. A state just passed a law requiring teachers to turn over information about trans students to parents for example. Schools banning discussion regarding trans people. States banning treatments which have been shown to reduce the disgustingly high suicide rate among trans people. Everything that she is doing is just a reflection of generally accepted social consciousness. And of course individual views about how that reflects on their lives varies and I won't speak for them. Though I would undoubtedly expect that they see her as a loud and well-funded voice who is a symptom and representation of the larger problem. Not the whole problem in and of herself of course. But again, obviously that will vary by individual. So that's it. Some people care. Some people don't. Just like any social issue.
Some people have the luxury of not caring. Some people don't have the luxury. Again, just like any social issue. Some people decided that they wanted to take a position on it. Other people don't, just like any social issue. So it's up to the individual to decide if it's something that they care about and make their individual choices. HTTPS www.gamespot.com slash articles slash Hogwarts Legacy is putting up huge number Sintwich on Steam slash 11006511327 slash It peaks all numbers and the outrage exists only in the mainstream media and the bubble of offended about anything people if you like the game, play it. JK Rowling gets royalties on all things Harry Potter now until her death and there's nothing you can do about it. By boycotting the game you're just hurting the game developers who earn a fraction of JK Rowling. Whatever your views are on her, she's hardly involved with the project. Her book universe has been used to base this game upon. That's it. Boycotting this is jumping on a bandwagon. Why don't you boycott the smartphone or the clothes you wear that have child labor somewhere along their production line? I DC about what Reddit thinks. I was watching my friends stream it and it looks dope AF. Might have to cop it after Ragnarok. People are mad that others keep asking this question I think. Just enjoy the game. Everyone is mad about everything now. The anti-trans stuff is part of it. But as a Redditor explained, the game itself isn't anti-trans. The bigger problem in my mind is how anti-Semitic the plot with the goblins is. A lot of people have explained it better than I can. So you'll find some clear explanations by googling. Basically. The idea of big-nosed people who manage money and steal children is playing into some of the oldest and worst anti-Semitic stereotypes. It's ridiculous. And a perfect example of the Streisand effect. Also, these same people complaining weren't whining so hard over Harry Potter experience at Universal or any LEGO Harry Potter games. Which both contribute far more and more directly to JKR's bank account. The comparison of goblins to Jewish people is incredibly anti-Semitic. And it's such a spurious claim. Seriously. Have y'all never seen goblins before? The HP goblins look just like the ones from first edition D&D which came out decades before Harry Potter. With that, the transphobia claims against JKR are way overblown. Ignorant? Maybe. Transphobic? Hardly. It's people repeating their own hyperbolic take often and loudly enough that it's become fact to people who can't think objectively. J Her initial tweets expressed solidarity with trans people as a woman and the shared history of violence and oppression those groups have experienced. That is hardly the take of a transphobe. The outrage is group think. That's all. J.K. Rowling has decided to burn down her legacy as one of the most beloved authors of our time by becoming outspokenly transphobic every chance that she gets. Wow. I love the Harry Potter franchise even more now. Hey up just buy the game and enjoy yourself smiley face. I think the bigger issue than the JKR Goblin controversy is the voice acting. It's several shades of awful. I'm no HP JKR fan. But I'm enjoying the game. It's polished and pretty. Runs well on my XSX. The gameplay is fun and overall it's a good product. The voice acting truly is abysmal though. Skip through the dialogue to save yourself ear canal damage would really appreciate a breakdown of what she exactly said. Haven't been able to find much at all other than her saying trans woman and biological woman go through different things. All credit goes to Terpsichore, who did literally all the hard work. I'm just here to transfer the knowledge. 
CW, transphobia, homophobia, anti-Semitism, prison brutality. You can read her posts in full here, then here, followed by here, TLDR. JKR is not only against trans rights to the point that she was upset Stephen King said trans women are women but also good friends with homophobic individuals and also uses the pen name of someone who was infamous with conversion therapy aka turning lgtbq plus into straight via torture jkr when you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman and as i've said Gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth. First of all note how she's referring to trans women as men. Lovely bit of transphobia there. Already mentioned that, but it bears repeating. Secondly, she's wrong. Gender recognition certificates have nothing to do with access to bathrooms. GRC and the Gender Recognition Act only relates to things like birth certificates, death certificates, and marriage certificates. It's an extremely narrow document that does very little. Access to things like bathroom according to gender is actually protected under the Equality Act 2010, which has a 2010 in the title for a reason which means all the fear-mongering nonsense in the above paragraph. It's the status quo, and has been the status quo since the 2010. So rather than rolling speaking the simple truth, she is rather once again spreading mistruths and lies about a minority group. In fact, this one is especially egregious, as access to bathrooms has always been on a self-ID basis. I mean, when was the last time you had to show a birth certificate or ID to use the bathroom? Now, you might notice that Rowling is quoting a science person here. A physician and researcher called Lisa Littman. Lisa Littman is a complete hack. She presupposed the existence of a hereto unknown psychological condition based off of interviewing a bunch of parents about their children. Her study, proving, rapid onset gender dysphoria i.e., the idea that the internet can suddenly make a kid trans is complete hocus. And there's a reason why it was retracted and only republished after having its conclusions. And most of its content removed and reworked. Littman's methodology was to specifically seek out unsupportive parents of transgender children. Then ask the parents how quickly their child became trans and did so using biased sampling techniques that resulted in an overrepresentation of transphobic parents. Like, I repeat myself, but to clarify at no point during Littman's study did she interview the children in question. Her study is entirely based off of the accounts of their parents. Bunch of studies to disprove her. 1, 2, and 3. Littman's own journal had to apologize for the low-quality publish. 1. Ongoing backlash surrounding J.K. Rowling's views on transgender people 2. The goblins are based on anti-Semitic stereotypes. There are cheaper ways to become instantly hated by the LGBTQ community than to drop $70 on a mid-tier Dark Souls clone but some people are very insistent on it. Basically the story revolves around very uncomfortably Jewish caricature goblins fighting for equal rights and you having to stop them. Which is made worse in that one of the devs was later outed as a neo-Nazi. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.